early on, intense. early on, Dillinger yep. hardly carry. And Jason Castro Jason, as well. That's right. JJ Helderbrand, first shot from outside is no good. Looking a little rusty. Now you can feel the energy that comes with a Helderbrand on the court. Mac Mac is tied up by Ronald Tubin, will be called for the personal. You know, Tubin has had to depress or suppress his offensive game here because his primary responsibility now is to limit and shadow, contain Mac Macardona. Although Tubin had uh, 21 points in, in game number two, he only had two points in game number one. And speaking of uh, Mac Mac going straight to the hoop for two. Uh, you know that he wants his points. I mean, he wants to tell Coach Chotres, do not lose confidence in me. I'm still your big-time scorer. Well, he is the leading uh, scorer in the BBA as of today. Villanueva will not get a basket. Now the white shirts are looking to run. Mac Mac Cardona from downtown. Nope. Five forty in the first quarter here, quarterfinal game number three. Rangai Ginebra looking to stay alive in this series. Nice repost move here for Rico Villanueva, but boy, that lane is so clogged by talking text. Shot clock leads three. They need Villanueva put up a shot under tight pressure there. But Talking Text doing a great defensive job of clogging the lane, not allowing Barangay never to come in, penetrate, or even score on post-ups. Jason Castro was fouled on his way to the basket, so... Now the uh, second stringers for Barangay Hinebra checking in, Eric Meck, in the ball game along with uh, Cyrus Baggio. Castro spotting up from outside. We're all tied at 10 here in Tal. And now he's matched up against a taller defender in Jared Dillinger. So he won't have those easy looks from the outside any longer. Eric Meck, uh, interception by Ali Peak, and the white shirt's now running. Here's Castro, all the way to the basket, and Harvey Carey is there for the follow. And more inside points, pouring in here for Talking Tex. Well, Talking Tex now seizing back uh, the lead, 12 to 10. Baggio. Referee Hawks play as a foul was called. By the way, our uh, officials calling the shots uh, for this ball game, referees uh, Jess Ferrer, Noel Kilingen, and Bong Pascual. Now, Coach Joseph Chico bringing in Cyrus Baggio because you know that he's a slasher. He's a penetrator. He knows how to attack the interior defense. He's going to get to the line. Penalty situation against Talking Tex. You will need aggressive play at this point so you take advantage of Talking Tex's penalty situation. Yancy De Ocampo giving uh, Ali Peek a rest. Coach Joseph Chico also giving JC Intal a rest and going with this, I would say a four guard lineup here because Willie Wilson is basically a guard, but he's going with Helderbrand, Baggio, and Tubit at the same time. So using that small lineup, Dillinger, top of the key. Now it's Yancey at the 15-foot line, and he gets it. Too easy for Yancey Del Campo. I mean, he's such a tall player. And that's the quickness that Coach Joseph Chico wants from his small lineup. He wants penetrations, and he wants high-percentage layups. Harvey Carey inside the lane, swatted away, and the Gen Kings are running. Here's Baggio on the break for two. What body control by Cyrus Baggio. He knew that Jared Dillinger was somehow around for the defensive effort, but he stepped on the brakes just in time for that nice floater. And at the 3.36 mark, we have a timeout here by the Tropang Texters. We're back 
with us here inside the Araneta Coliseum for game number three of this quarter-final matchup between the Tropic Dectors and the Kings. 16 to 14 is the count. Rangay Hinebra on top. Jason Castro, no good. A pushing foul called here underneath against uh, Yancey and uh, as, since they're in the penalty, this will mean two free throws. And as Rapak Texas must keep that in mind, they're in the penalty. And uh, some just complaining, a warning has been called. And Eric Bank trying to get into uh, position there at the post and being held off there by uh, Yancy Del Campo. So Eric Bank, one time MVP in this league, is at the free throw line. So Coach uh, Chot Reyes is given a warning here. You know, Eric Mink has had a storybook career here in the PBA. He's 35 years old now, but you remember back in 2000, he played for uh, Tanguay, averaged over 24 points a game. Well, we'll see what uh, Chess Cadet has for us uh, at the court. Darren Dillinger scored the game-winning shot in the previous game after an inbound pass from Rana Del Del Campo. And of course tonight he will be a marked man because Kinebra definitely does not want him to do that again. Now he says he would rather that they targeted him instead of Mac Mac and Jimmy. He'd rather get the heat on himself and have Mac Mac and Jimmy left open all night so they can score all night long. And he says that this is going to be a very tough game because closing out the series may be the hardest thing to do. But of course, Talk and Text knows that they can do it. Paolo and Kinita. Thank you, Cheska. So That's Jared, confidence. Yes, the <laughs> Dillinger being a team player there. Yeah. Yancy de Ocampo, he can hit it from there. Now if Yancy jacks up those three-pointers, who's there to take care of the offensive rebounds? Cyrus back is slicing the middle once again, Kenita, and now he's got eight points. Now how he can do that is beyond imagination. I mean, you have to see it to believe it. And here they go again. Runaway train, and uh, this one is going to go whose way? They'll still stay with the, the he never way. I see the change of pace here with Coach Wichiko going with a three-guard lineup. Oh, actually, we're saying a four-guard lineup, but Sunday Salvacion is now on the floor playing for Ginebra. Salvacion from three-point land. Nope. And now Dillinger looking ahead. Renren Ritualo is also in the ballgame now for the Tropang Dexters. Yancy. Oh, what an effort there. Nice blind side defense coming from JJ Heldebrand. Cyrus Pagio with some hang time. He was looking for the foul. No call. Well, Del Campo was there to take care of business. And now Harvey carry down the other end for two. And for Inebra, it's important for them to disrupt the flow of Talking Tech's offense. That time, they were in rhythm. They got the ball into the hands of Harvey Carey, and he was clear for a basket inside. Uh-oh, here we go again. Another foul against Yancey, and Eric Bank is going to capitalize for sure. Another foul on Del Campo. That's going to be his second foul. Again, Barangay Hinebra will be shooting free throws here, and they have gotten a ton of free throws in this series. That's right. We were talking about that before the game. Can you imagine Hinebra is averaging 41 free throw attempts in this series against 28 for Talking Text. And still Talking Text is ahead 2-0. But that game too, that game could have gone out of the way. Check out this piece of action earlier on for our KFC assist delivery of the quarter. Castro finding Harvey Carey for the lay-in. Enjoy watching the PBA with finger licking food. Dial 887-8888. And Meg is improving his free throw shooting. He's going four out of four. And so far in this game, Kinebra seven out of seven from the line. Impeccable shooting. I think you officially just jinxed them, uh, Kinedo. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey Carey, double teamed. Ball is tapped loose, but this will stay with Cock and Tex. You know, we were talking about seven out of seven free throws for Inebra. Talking Text has not 
attempted at all from the line. It looks like an offensive foul. On Render and Ritual trying to get away from the defense. Well, let's see what gives here Jason Castro. Well, was trying the, to explain some. Was the, was the ball in play? I don't think the ball was in play. Anyway, they called the foul. That's an offensive foul, so no free throws. Turnover by Baggio trying to get it into Eric Mink. A new man on the floor here is Nick Velasco, and he's going to play defense against Eric Mink. Yancy Del Campo already crippled with two personal fouls. Now Jason Castro. Hand off to Dillinger. Referee Hawks play. This one will go on Cyrus Baggio. You know, Mark Kagiwa is also uh, quietly checked in for the Kings. And Kevin White as well. That's correct. Kevin White at the guard position. Castro with five on the shot clock. Gets it off and in. What a quick shot by, by Jason Castro. Uh, he's a shot maker. We call him the maestro. Castro the maestro. <laughs> and he, is, he has been the, the top offensive weapon of Talking Texas in this series. That's right. And you see the way he eluded the defense of Mark Kagiwa taking that very explosive first step. He knows that Kagiwa, that Kagiwa is not 100%. I would say he would be, what, maybe a little less than 70%. So he doesn't have the lateral quickness. And uh, if you're an offensive player, you're going to exploit that. Salvation to Kagiwa. Mark the spark in the lane. And they'll pick up another foul here from Talking Text. Talking Text in this quarter alone. Velasco is called for the foul. Yes, they already have 11 team fouls uh, in quarter number one. I'm talking about Talking Text. Eric Meck will be back at the line. He has not missed from the stripe in this game. You know, somehow he has slowed down through the years. But, uh, you know, I was talking about his rookie season with uh, Tandwai when he averaged over 24 points a game. This is a former MVP who once shot 45 points in one game. Now he's been transformed into a role player. Someone who will give you rebounds, give you tough defense inside, and, well, someone who can hit the free throws for Coach Joseph Vichico. There's a warning there on Red Ring Ritualo. And he just breaks out with a smile. You know, the important here is focus. I mean, if you're talking text, you're one win away from closing out. You need to be focused, and you shouldn't think, well, they need to win three in a row to clinch the series. If you have that mindset, you might just lose game three. Zone defense here by Barangay Nebra to end the quarter. Two, three zone defense. Renner Ritualo in and out. Here's Harvey Carey. One more serving and still no good. As a foul, I think, against Barangay Nebra on that rebound play. Loose ball foul. He never now in the penalty. Yes, this one will be Baggio's second personal foul. But what a pace uh, we've had here, uh, Kenito, in the first quarter. It's blistering. And that's the reason why both these coaches have already gone deep into their benches, bringing in second unit players. I think they realize this is going to be a long, drawn-out war. That Guzman is back in the game. And he's there again for defensive purposes. He's got six fouls to give. And with uh, 21.5 seconds to go, you need some good defense here to stop Parangay Nebra from scoring without giving up the foul. Baggio. Hand off oh, Eric yes. Mick. What a pass coming from the Skywalker. Skyrus Baggio. There's still enough time here for Talking Dex to extricate Jason Castro oh, yes. with the two points. And then an interception. The Guzman with a chance to end this. Oh, we had a good line. And we end the first 12 minutes of play with uh, Barangay Ginebra on top here. 26 to 23. And what action we've had so far.